impact though. No, for sure. Yeah. Oh, and dude, let me tell you what, man. There's something going on with my toe, mm-hmm. my big toe specifically, where like every time I put weight on it, it kind of hurts. Like, and I don't mm. know what's wrong with it. Like, I try pulling on it and popping on it. I try stretching it. It's been like this for like three days now. Where like anytime yeah. I like put some weight on my big toe, it hurts. But you, so does moving it do anything? Like you're, you just said popping it, you've been moving it around. Yeah, like I'll stretch it, I'll pop it, or I try to pop and it. It feels fine then. Or is no, it no, it feels fine while I'm doing that. But it, it, yeah, as soon as I put like weight on it again and I start walking with it, yeah, it starts hurting quite a bit. Like a pressure pain too, maybe, or is it like kind a of sharp yeah. pain? I don't, I don't know. It's weird. It's very weird. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not. I just don't. Doesn't sound broken. No, it's definitely not broken or sprained. Well, no, my mom thought maybe I jammed it uh-huh. somehow, but I don't know. I feel like by now it should be going away, but it's not. Did it's, you jam your toe recently though? not to my memory mm. i feel like i would remember yeah you yeah know? you'd remember something like that you i don't feel, know i feel like it anyways maybe just the old pangs growing old oh. <laughs> this is what i have to deal with for the rest of my life hey, maybe i don't may- want to do that maybe- i want to be on my feet yeah you're probably fine it'll probably just go away sometimes when maybe i have a pain i just let it go through go away. Come again. anyways that's enough of that what's popping players welcome back to the Two Penny Games Cast, episode 99. I am your host, Tav and Botho, here with my good friend and co-host, Connor Elliott. Say hello to the people, Connor. Hello. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't know, every week, me and Connor sit down and we give you the new news in the video game industry. We each come to you with two topics, two pennies, if you will, and we give you our two cents on them. You can catch us every week at youtube.com slash two penny games cast or mainstream podcast services of your choice. Uh Monday, eight AM Central Time. Uh please like, follow, subscribe, share, all of that fun stuff. But if just talking about video games isn't enough for you, you need to see some gamers have some real gamer moments. Hop on over to twitch.tv slash two penny games where uh we do solo streams every every so often whenever we can. But Every Tuesday, 2 p.m. Central Time, me and my good buddy Phil, we sit down and we put on a little show called Hype, H-Y-E-P, Have You Ever Played, uh, in which one of us shows the other a video game that they've never played before. Now, last week we were supposed to finish up Sly 2, Mm -hmm. Band of Thieves, Uh, but because PlayStation Now switched over to the PlayStation Plus premium things or whatever, Mm -hmm. the Sly Cooper collection got lost, and uh, we were playing through PS Now. Um... So, Phil, we've lost all that progress. Yeah. Yeah. So, is that the end of that series? Who knows? Phil, maybe in his off time, will go back and replay all of up to that point so we can finish it out. Who knows? Uh, very disappointing. Very upsetting. So, we loaded up some Resident Evil 3 Remake. Mm-hmm. And uh, we, we made it more than halfway through that. So, that come watch us finish that out next week. Uh, Twitch.tv slash 2 games, And you can see all archive footage uh, edited down for a more watchable experience, youtube.com slash two penny games cast. Up live on the channel right now is the Sly One After the Hype review with Phil. Please go check that out. See how he felt about Sly Cooper and the Thievius Raccoonus. Also up and doing very well for uh the channel is the Xbox and Bethesda live reaction showcase that me and Connor did last week. Please go check that out. Share it with friends. All that fun stuff. That one's doing really well for us. And we really appreciate all of the yes. love and support on that. Thanks for all who watched. Absolutely. Uh, but, Connor, let's get right into it, shall we? Hmm? Uh, so, we have a policy on this show uh, to where... Oh, my time codes are all going to be fucked up now. Yeah. Well, and dogs. I'll go back and get, fix it later then. I don't have to worry about it this weekend. Hmm. All right. Uh, we have a policy on the show that we care about the people who make the video games. As much as we love to ha- have a good time and talk about video games, sometimes shitty people do shitty things. And uh, this week is no exception. Mm-hmm. So... We're going to hop over to gamesindustry.biz, where Brendan Sinclair writes, uh, Activision Blizzard internal review finds, quote, no evidence it ignored harassment. Activision Blizzard today, this was on the 16th, uh, released a summary of an internal review that found no evidence company senior executives looked the other way on harassment claims. Quote, contrary to many of the allegations, the board and its external advisors have determined that there is no evidence to suggest that Activision Blizzard senior executives ever intentionally ignored or attempted to downplay the instances of gender harassment that occurred and were reported, the report said. The report did not address Wall Street Journal's reporting that Activision Blizzard CEO Bobby Kotick overruled an HR department determination that a co-head of Treyarch be fired over an allegation of sexual harassment. The re- quote, the review of 
uh, contemporaneous documentation, documentation and statements by relevant individuals shows that media criticism of the board and Activision Blizzard's senior executives as incentives to workplace matters is without merit, the company said. Uh, it acknowledged that there were some uh, substantiated incidents instances of gender harassment, but they were not evidence of systemic problems. It also pointed out uh, to external advisors that it, it's, that it said agreed – uh, with the board of directors' findings. Quote, over the years, the company has appropriately disciplined and exited employees to ensure that our practices match our policies. There simply is no room at Activision Blizzard for anyone who does not practice our corporate value of providing a safe, inclusive, and welcoming workplace that serves as a model for our industry. The report did not address a report that Kodak himself once threatened to have an assistant killed, something the company called, quote, obviously hyperbolic and inappropriate voicemail that Kodak had already apologized for, nor did it address an uh, ar ar arbitration, fine. arbitration, thank you, settlement Kodak reached when a flight attendant on a private jet he co-owned, allegedly he fired her for complaining about sexual harassment. Activision Blizzard also once again took issue with the California Department of Fair Employment and Housing, referring to the agent's ongoing, agency's ongoing lawsuit against it as highly inflammatory made for press allegations. Uh, so yeah, mm -hmm. quick update. Activision Blizzard says that Activision Blizzard isn't doing anything wrong. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, y'all are full of shit. Y'all are full of shit. And this is just a way to bail out Kodak and, you know, uh, uh, make sure everybody gets their money right when mm -hmm. they're on their way out fucking garbage ass people doing garbage ass things man to ride the point home uh they claimed that there was no systemic problem of sexual harassment in the workplace but back if you remember when these things were first brought to light one of the things that really set people off was that blizzard's uh i guess their main headquarters i don't know if it was other places that also were owned by blizzard uh had breastfeeding rooms and it was a apparently a constant problem of men opening the doors it accidentally, of course, walking quote into unquote. the room, uh, quote unquote, uh, walking into it, seeing it, and then leaving and apologizing. But it happened enough to where there are apparently multiple times this occurred. And it didn't single out a certain person for it either, at least none of the accusations. But repeat to. offenders. Yes. So when something like that is uh, uh, you know, leaked by people who work at Blizzard and have experienced this kind of stuff, compared to how many, how long since that first story dropped? Back in August of last year? It's been over a year. Yeah. yeah. All this time later, and now they find, oh, well, you know, there's no actual issues going on here. One of the, obviously, the error is that there was an internal investigation, and that it had to be carried out before they can officially make a statement. Obviously, mm -hmm. it was all set up from the beginning to be in favor of them, but this would have become a lot more apparent sooner than later. They would have, it's kind of strange to, after all the heat has died down comparatively, now they say, oh, well, you know, there's nothing. All these claims, they're ridiculous. They're overblown. It's classic damage control. Separate yourself from the time it occurred and then develop it, the news, the, the story, to try and, you know, side with your view on things right. or your stance on things. Uh, seriously, as you said, scummy behavior. It's just not surprising, though. You know, of course, an oh, internal course. investigation would find nothing wrong. Because, yeah, run by the board. Yeah. The, yeah, the, these are the, 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 the criminals are running the own investigation. They're they're yeah. running their own case. So of mm -hmm. course they're going to find themselves in light of whatever say yeah, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um I will say like I saw this story circulating a lot mm -hmm. on uh social spheres. So it's not like um it's being ignored no, by no. the public. So you're still getting your bad headlines. You're still getting your bad press. You're still doing all these things. Um and it I think this is just to get when when inevitably Microsoft starts pushing motherfuckers out, uh, it's so that they can still get their bonuses and their their severance packages and so forth that mm -hmm. they need for uh, to fulfill contracts that were signed forever ago, et cetera, et cetera. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So that they can still get their millions of dollars on their way out. This sucks, but they're still on their way out. Mm -hmm. Um and yeah, man, it's, I mean, yeah, just fuck this. Yeah. They're, they're on their way out, but it's, it, a lot of it's tied into the, you know, the fact that Microsoft is acquiring Blizzard yeah. and doesn't want to deal with that hard baggage. Yeah. So in reality, if that wasn't occurring, I, you know, nothing would have changed either way. Yeah. So. Hmm. Hopefully that uh, lawsuit goes well though. Uh, yeah. Unfortunate for the moment, you know, kind of a damper on the week, but, uh, the rest of the, the rest of the, we're taking our steps. Mm -hmm. Progress is slow. Always has been. Anyways, Connor, 
Let's move on to the second topic of the day. My second penny. That last one was my first one. Uh, so Capcom started the week off with a uh, showcase themselves uh, that we mentioned on last week's episode. But on the day that we record, we just didn't have time to cover it. It went on Monday. The podcast goes live Monday at 8 a.m. Uh, so we we uh, I watched this Monday night. I didn't watch it live, but mm-hmm. I did watch it Monday night. And uh, you've watched it as well. Yes, I actually only watched it till today. I, I completely yeah. missed it throughout the entire week. And only gotten around. To All right. Now. Well, since you're a little more raw on it, and you you know you've uh, seen it more recently than I have, what was your opinion? Oh uh, well, I I enjoyed it. You know, there wasn't super crazy big things that made me jump out of my skin. Uh, one of the pieces actually would have, but I knew about it beforehand. Uh, we'll get into that later. What exactly that is from the showcase, but um, you know, I don't really. Obviously, you're seeing Monster on here, under here real quick. Mm-hmm. That didn't interest me either. But some of the later parts of the show. The end, near kind of the midway point, it started telling me things that I either didn't know or was happy to know. You know, nothing, like I said, to blow my socks off because they didn't do any real big major reveals except for the one that I, you know, just mentioned beforehand. So I, I had a, I had a fun time watching it. And it was short, too, so it didn't feel dragged on. There was no constant stopping to hear celebrities talk, which is always a good thing. Mm-hmm. So I, I enjoyed it. Yeah, I'm on the opposite end here. Yeah. Uh, I thought this was a big waste of time. Mm-hmm. Uh, everything could, anything important here could have just been in breakout trailers or a blog post or, you know, just a quick little update or whatever sure. on the individual things. Um, the only thing that interested me was the Resident Evil news, mm-hmm. but I'm a Resident Evil fan, so you're speaking to me anyway. Yeah. Um, the uh, the Monster Hunter stuff I thought was cool for Monster Hunter fans. I thought that was delivered in a solid package. But overall, you you guys somehow made thirty five minutes feel like in a fucking eternity. <laughs> um, I I did feel that Monster Hunter dragged on too long, but they did have a lot of news to cover, so yeah. that's cool for them. Um, you know, lots of expansions and so forth. And if you're a Monster Hunter fan, you probably already know all of this, or you know, you can go out and find your stuff for Mon- Monster Hunter Rise yourselves. Um, so we're not going to go into full detail of really anything that got covered here. Uh, but you know, cool for monster hunter fans that you get all your stuff. Uh, what was it? It, oh, it was the a Capcom collection, fighting uh, collection and stuff. Get a bunch of cap old Capcom fighting games. Cool for one that. One of the things I liked, I, I hadn't heard about that beforehand, or maybe if I had it completely left my mind, but I was, you know, I'll probably get my hands on this. It's a lot of games that I, some of them I've, I have actually played. Other ones I haven't, and I think I would like them. So yeah. I was excited for that. Uh, and then uh, Exo Primal got a deep dive. <sighs> yeah, no. Yeah, no. Yeah, I was. I was willing to give this game a shot. And sure. Like, let, yeah, me, I was. let me let me let me hold. Ju- no, this game don't look great. It no. does look dumb fun, but like a full price dumb fun. Fuck no, mm-hmm. man. Get this is a rental game. You yeah. know, if I've ever seen one, it, um, it's very focused online as well. And the online features, I don't really feel interested in getting into you yeah know, it, it didn't drag me in and the dinosaur elements which would have been the coolest part seems kind of just you know more what is that just, game uh, what is that game from back in the day where you fight giant ants oh uh the planetary earth planetary defense Planet, force planetary yeah defense force? it's a planet earth something like that whatever yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that, that that's what this felt like yeah. like this felt like a modern day version of that it did which is cool uh, it wasn't running very well i mm-hmm. didn't think what they showed was running very well i don't think uh uh, the mechs were like working together very well. Uh, like it didn't seem like the interplay between classes worked f- was working very well. Mm-hmm. And um, the game is just generally kind of ugly to look at, anyways. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, like it. I mean, there is a dumb fun element to it that I don't think can be ignored. Um, but yeah, overall, man, I just thought this game. Yeah, hard pass. Mm-hmm. Not not interested in seeing anymore. Not interested in really giving it a real shot. Uh, if you and I were still like 13 and had all the time in the world and weekends were actual weekends mm-hmm. for us, uh, yeah, man, we'd hit the family video or the blockbuster or the, the red box and we'd rent it out for a couple of, you know, a day or two and, you know, play it for a couple of hours and then move on to whatever mm-hmm. else, you know, but, uh, no, no interest in actually giving this any type of time. Went a long time on it. Uh, and then they jumped to... Uh, Dragon's Dogma, but just to talk about the 10th anniversary, in which case they were going to say, hey, we're going to talk about it a few days later, and we'll talk about what they announced Mm. in a minute. Uh, Connor, hold it in. I know you're (laughs) excited, because you like Dragon's Dogma. Yeah. Uh, But 
I don't, I don't know shit about Dragon Star. Should I play that original game? Would I like that game? I, I think you probably actually big chance you would probably would. How long? How old is that game? That game is old, right? It is. It's it a is. 360 generation game. Yes, yes, yeah. it is, and it got ported to uh, later the main the main you know oh next so it's gen on the four? consoles. No, oh, it's on, on the four. four. Oh, yeah. okay. And I, I yeah, it's on the four. Okay. Mm-hmm. I wonder if we're gonna get a five version coming down the line eventually Mm -hmm. anyways and then as i spoke before resident evil village got a huge uh news cycle thing in which uh most of it was dedicated to resident evil village uh where new dlc got a got announced shadows of rose third person where you spoilers for resident evil village uh Mm -hmm. where you play as rose and you're trying to find uh you know answers to your why you have these abilities etc 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 all that like stuff or whatever it's a very strange direction for resident evil to go and i'm not sure how much i like it yeah even though i did like resident evil village quite a bit uh new playable characters for the mercenary modes including uh chris redfield heisenberg and lady dimitrisk yeah uh and a uh third person mode for the campaign yeah which is very interesting and tells me that they're done with first person <laughs> they were like all right this yeah. was cute but let's move on which makes sense i think that's got to do with the success of the remake series mm-hmm. uh, yeah. and how and how well that's doing and you know even though seven did put us on track i don't think eight got the response that they were looking for mm-hmm. um so i think I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen when the eventual Resident Evil Nine happens because we're going in such a weird space. Um, but I guess we'll see. I was hoping to get a full trilogy of first-person games, mm-hmm. but that doesn't look like it's going to happen. And if you've played Resident Evil Village, uh, you know, you know how that ended. Mm-hmm. So yeah. yeah, you know, like I guess we're open to things being new. And then uh, Resident Evil Seven, Two, and Three all got uh, their PS5 upgrades uh all released day of the showcase uh that's really cool i've already installed resident mm-hmm. evil 2 for the ps5 and i'm instead of loading up a save i'm gonna just replatinum it from uh from a raw save file i'm very excited to do that to do that myself uh there was a date for uh october 28th for the winter's expansion in which they give us the dlc the mercenaries content and the third person mode third person mode might be enough to bring me back to village i was looking at that and i was thinking the same thing especially because it has new animations which yeah which would be pleasing to look at yeah and and, and um i, I just like resident evil in third, third person. person more than first personally anyways so do i um so you know i might try that out it's definitely gonna lose its horror vibes in when it, when it is scary it's gonna lose all of that but you know i'm interested in doing it and uh, yeah it might bring me back yeah um we are busy this winter lots of releases this winter so definitely not in the season will i be Mm. doing it but i might it might be enough to bring me back when i have some time yeah again and uh, you know i don't play the mercenaries obviously because i don't own the game you don't play it either but that's cool idea to make those characters playable yeah yeah absolutely and there are trophies tied to the mercenaries Mm -hmm. mode so that might you know bring me in and if it makes some of those trophies easier to get then yeah i'll definitely do that it's just there's so many you have to go you have to play that game like five times Mm -hmm. and i liked village i didn't like it that much no no. it's also long like and there's not many shortcuts you can take Mm -hmm. um which is annoying um unlike resident evil 2 and resident evil 3 where you could beat both those games within an hour Mm -hmm. if you really tried um resident evil 4 uh they just played the same trailer again Mm -hmm. i'm still excited for that weird that they chose to do that should should i play the original game before this comes out i feel like i should i've been yeah yeah. i've been thinking about going to it yeah yeah. i'm gonna have a period it's not it's not super long it's old prepare for it to be old i'll play on switch and it's tonally very (laughs) different and tonally it's Mm -hmm. very very different um than most of the resident evil games you've experienced Mm -hmm. um but it is fun. I've even like loaded it up and I've played the opening chapters and I was like, nice. yeah, this is a solid time. Good. Um, it, I, I think it mostly holds up. It's just, there's a couple of things that you are going to have to readjust in mm-hmm. your mind yeah, fair um, to get it to work the way you want it, it to. It's, is it only on switch? I, I said that because I thought that was, the no, it's on PS4. Place. Oh, I'll get it then. There. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That, that, okay. That's where I played it on. No platinum trophy, which pissed me the fuck off. <laughs> Resident <laughs> Evil five and Resident Evil six ports got platinums. Too what bad. Yeah, that's a, that is a strange choice, though. That's a very strange choice. Uh, anyways, but yeah, Resident Evil 4 is fine, and I do think you should replay it, mm-hmm. especially in the lead-up to this, because it's, it is it it is on that... Like, it's still accessible, it's still playable, unlike the original Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3, which I think, like, are just lost to time mm-hmm. at this point. Um, and I think it's going to put a really interesting um, perspective 
on the remake and i think it'll actually recontextualize why village was the way it was in mm-hmm. your mind like village def like it pulls a lot of inspiration from four yeah not just in like level design and and uh like gameplay type stuff but tone mm-hmm. very much resident evil 4 um but still finding a middle ground with the tone they established in seven anyways uh there was also like extra quote-unquote gameplay of resident evil 4 premiered it was just leon walking in a straight line mm-hmm. so i was like all right that was a waste of my time um yeah and just in general i felt this ca- this whole showcase was just a waste of my time mm-hmm. um didn't need any of that and that cool. just to make it worse a couple days later mm-hmm. they announced Do- dragon's dogma 2 anyway outside of the fucking showcase yeah. what the fuck was the point yeah well, that was a strange move because when i found out about this it was just through this uh, like the days after because i didn't watch the capcom announcement uh live that they were doing something regarding it so it just that this was the way i knew about it and the first yeah. one was just kind of made more unnecessary by that fact because i feel like a lot of people also saw it this way through as well because it was just a general release rather than having to watch a whole conference on a monday yeah which you know wasn't the most accessible out of all the summer games fest events it's just fucking weird yeah just fucking weird uh, coming, so we though? don't have any we don't have anything like solid on it only no. that it's in development uh by what studio is doing it who's doing it there are a few official details but we do know the title take advantage of the capcom's re engine which i love that engine yeah great engine uh that's where all the remakes and the just the new wave of resident evil has been in it's on that uh dmc5 was in the Mm -hmm. re engine it's a beautiful engine yeah games run super well they're high fidelity it's a great engine um director hideki uh it's sono uh announced the new game at the end of a video looking back at the creation of the original dragons Mm -hmm. dogma so yeah they did it to hype up the anniversary thing that they were doing um dragons dogma not a huge like title no uh like pretty underrated in gaming circles i know a lot of people have a lot of love for it there's some people who didn't who didn't care for it Mm -hmm. um but yeah it's very 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 fucking strange that that you chose to do this outside of your main big showcase yeah especially because like this was the thing that pulled headlines Mm -hmm. like people were like whoa you're doing this and there i saw a bunch of people get really excited for it and then the showcase was just a shrug you're Mm -hmm. like all right i guess this is what's happening anyways uh, yeah, that Capcom showcase wasted time. Yeah, hey, but yeah, I think you would like the original Dragon's Dogma. It's a it's it's a fun game. I haven't played all of it, but I've picked it. It's a very big game. It's an open world game, so it's kind of yeah. a time sinker, which is why I never beat it. And if the first time I picked it up, I was too young, and it was yeah. kind of a little bit above my uh, difficulty range at the time. So uh, it's a fun, a great RPG with a lot of interesting mechanics in it, a lot of different ways to you know go through combat. I think you would enjoy it. You ever had some time to play it? Maybe. If this can come I no longer have time, Connor. Game re- the new releases are coming down the pipeline, yep. and I've got other things that I need mm-hmm. to finish playing. I got to re platinum Resident Evil Two. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, uh, Connor, your uh, the third topic of the day. Your first penny. Fire Emblem screenshots of a finished new game seemingly leak. Uh, we're pulling an IGN article by Ryan Dinsdale. Screenshots of what rumors say is a new, already complete Fire Emblem game have seemingly leaked online. Prompted by a Fami Boards post from industry insider Emily Rogers. I've heard that name before. I don't remember what, she, what else she's leaked, but I've heard that name before. Which included several purported details of a new game. Reddit user uh, Mia's... What is this? Mia's Medelta uh, posted what they claimed were screenshots from it alongside further details. The screenshots were then shared by favorite dish on Twitter below quote. I can confirm this is a brand new fire emblem game and it has been completed for quite some time now. I'm not sure what the delay has been in announcing it said, uh, Mia's Medelta. Interestingly, some aspects of it seem to be reused from the canceled. Wii uh, fire emblem game. Additionally, the rumors of a fire emblem Four remake are real as well. The posts claim the game is a brand new entry in the series with multiple new characters and a summoning mechanic that allows players to bring in past Fire Emblem characters, though apparently it isn't like the mobile game Fire Emblem Heroes, which includes a similar mechanic. The main character apparently features red and blue hair, as seen in the alleged screenshots, and the roster of other characters seemingly includes regularly recurring character Anna. Uh, The post also said that Gust, the developer best known for its Altier... Altalier franchise 
uh, has been helping with the Fire Emblem game, though it is mainly being developed between Intelligent Systems and Koei Tecmo, who worked on Fire Emblem Three Houses together, and has been completed for more than a year. God damn. All of this information needs uh, taken with a pinch of salt until Nintendo itself confirms it, but the post suggests the publisher was waiting for a big Nintendo Direct presentation to announce it. Given that the company is yet to hold its usual E3-adjacent Nintendo Direct, however, a confirmation of a new Fire Emblem could be on the way soon. So, uh, let me find these screenshots here. Let's look at them. Let's look at them, Connor. Mm -hmm. Let's have some fun. Let's digest. Let's. Uh, you have to go get the. Uh, it's kind of it's marking uh, it as spoilers. I gotta so. log in. I gotta log in. Oh, people know your Twitter handle now. People know my Twitter handle. Follow me on Twitter. It's in the description of every video. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, and this isn't what I wanted. Yeah, you have to go uh, back. Come back in. And get to this. Pretty good. Stick with me, ladies and gentlemen. We're getting there. Such We're a hard there. process. There We're we getting go. There. Show the sensitive content. Show mm -hmm. it to me, baby. But, oh, not. All right. So what do we got here? We got some Japanese that I don't understand. Some, mm -hmm. So oh, it's oh, it's red and blue hair. I thought it was red or blue hair. Uh, no, no, no. It was red and blue. Oh, interesting. Joy-Con colors. People hair. Uh, people okay. Are calling That's it. a choice. That's mm -hmm. a choice. What is this? These are characters. Maybe we got some relationship screens, some stats and things. What is this? This this, this looks unfinished. This, this is not a pretty. UI to look at. Yeah, I don't think it is. Is come along as well. Then again, who knows when these screenshots were taken? Yeah, who knows? Yeah, you know, it's this could be an old build. This it looks could. about right, but I just, I just don't like the style of having the characters on the side here. That's a little strange to me. I, uh, and then some dialogue. Yep, Fire Emblem likes its dialogue. Hey, look, look, this looks like a Fire Emblem game. <laughs> it every aspect of it looks like yeah, yeah. yeah. believable screenshot. Well, I believe this is a, I believe this is a Fire Emblem game. Whether uh -huh. it's that canceled Wii U or Wii one and or the new one, I don't know. Uh, but okay, yeah, sure, Fire Emblem, it's coming. We got a direct coming soon, don't we? Like at the end of the month or yeah. Something? As of right now, uh, all the rumors are pointing to the twenty eighth. I mm -hmm. believe is when the direct is coming. Nintendo's yet to have their big thing, and it's probably going to close out our announcement season here. Yep. Uh, when is the twenty eighth? That is in seven days. So next week, on a Sunday, on a Tuesday. Oh, that's okay, on a okay. Tuesday. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, next week's episode we won't be talking about it, but mm -hmm. on the fourth we will. Mm -hmm. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, maybe we'll do a reaction. Yeah, maybe depends. Oh, it's on a Tuesday. That's a tough timing. It is. We'll depends on the time. Out. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Um, but you and I were hypothesizing about it in our, in our, in our two penny chat, mm -hmm. uh, that we use to, to, uh, uh, uh communicate and coordinate all these, the all marketplace the, the of ideas. Yeah. The marketplace mm -hmm. of ideas. Uh, and I was like, Hey man, correct me if I'm wrong, but three houses was, uh, announced and then like released within a couple of months. Right. It was. Yes. Yeah. Um, February, February was when it was, uh, first announced. Now it was released in the summer. Yeah, July. Yeah. Right in the middle. Wow. Smack dab. Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah that's a short time. Yeah, so yeah. makes sense. That's a huge, sprawling RPG like that takes a lot of time, like I imagine. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is just kind of what they do with Fire Emblem right now is they just don't give you a lot of lead up. Just tell, just announce it when it's ready and release it when it's ready. I think it should be a more commonly used standard in the video game industry to do that kind of stuff. I like the big hype. I, I do too, but I, my only worry is that you, know, you always have the hype generation. That yeah. That uh, can be great. And admittedly, it's not usually a bad thing. Yeah. But sometimes hype can die down. They can be you lost know, in the wave. I like I like knowing that Spider Man Two is coming in a few years. Sure. So, oh, it's. I don't think every game no. should be like that. No. I think, and I think Fire Emblem is a, is a smaller franchise. So this is a franchise that yeah, like announce it when it's closer to release because. Yeah. One, it's Fire Emblem. We don't want to hear about it every Nintendo Direct. We want to hear about it when it's ready. And yeah. Then show us what's new and then put it out. I think they've been doing a pretty good job with their Pokemon games doing that, where they're like. Yeah, okay, we're ready to release. Here mm -hmm. it is. Uh, Scarlet and Violet being the longest lead-up time we've mm -hmm. had in a while, to my memory. Um, so, I, yeah, I like Nintendo's style here, where they're just like, hey, man, we're just gonna... You're gonna buy them. Mm -hmm. Like... We, like our we know our attach rate numbers. You're gonna buy this game. We know who's interested in this game. Yeah, you know, this is what it is. Yeah. Um, the I red and blue has me interested. It does. Yeah. Do you think morality system, maybe? Some good and evil? Some choices, Ooh, maybe? maybe? And then the more evil you get, the more red you get, the more blue you are, the more, you know, very, 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 very sixth generation of consoles <laughs> level of thinking here with Nintendo. Um, yeah, I'm itching for a new Fire Emblem. 
I, I have it, enough time has passed to where I'm like, okay, let's go again. Let's go. Yeah. I played hours of the three houses. 200 hours of plus yeah. easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Loved, loved, loved three houses so much. Mm-hmm. So, uh, both of our games of the year in 2019, right? I believe so. Yeah. Yes. Well, for you, it was either that or Sekiro. No, it was definitely three houses. Yeah. If I did Sekiro, it's a shame. I love Sekiro. I love Sekiro. I love Sekiro, I love Sekiro as well. Yeah, you changed I too. I also yeah. love Sekiro, yeah. But Three Houses is uh, a favorite game of mine, and I hope this is, you know, the next one. I'm, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm itching. I'm itching for, mm-hmm. for actual details, for actual information. Yeah, so I'm, am I. I'm so fucking excited. So uh, hopefully we'll find out with that direct coming soon. Mm-hmm. But let's move on to our final topic of the day, your second penny of the day, Connor. Mm-hmm. Again. This is weird to me. All right, this is just weird. <laughs> why does Final Fantasy VII get this much love? You know, oh, this is strange. Oh, I don't know. You know, I don't know why it gets. So anyways, much love. we had a Final Fantasy VII 25th anniversary celebration where they had a 14 minute little, uh, uh, just kind of presentation where mm-hmm. they showed off a lot of Final Fantasy VII news. Yes. Everything to do with Final Fantasy VII, it was in here. Mm-hmm. Uh, this on the opposite side of the Capcom, I thought this was great. I thought it was amazing. Yeah, we we were amazing. we were moving through it quick. Everything was fast. Nothing overstayed its welcome um even the things that i didn't care about like first soldier were in and they were out Uh uh-huh cool we got some updates to the mobile battle royale game this is what they are let's move on Mm -hmm. uh the the chinobi thing what is it called ever crisis got a little update uh did we get a date for that uh you mean crisis core no ever crisis which is the ever crisis which is the (laughs) the full like remake uh constantly oh uh uh so let's just go through it with how it is because this is short enough and it's quick enough that we can do it final fantasy 7 remake intergrade is coming to pc steam uh epic game stores coming eventually steam deck compatible all that great stuff man that's steam deck man seems to be doing good for itself i've been paying paying much attention people like it people Mm -hmm. really really like it uh i think i'm gonna wait for the second iteration Mm -hmm. get some better battery powers things going on stuff like that but like you know, you can you can emulate on it. Games Pass is on it. Like there you go. Yeah. It, it, everything is on it. It is like a built-in PC for everybody. Uh, so let me try and find when it's coming. I didn't drop maybe like that day. No, it's it's not out yet. Uh, da, 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 da. compatible with Steam Deck coming to PC. We got a couple of like cool little memorabilia things. Did, oh, did, did I overshoot here. it? Oh, June seventeenth. Okay. Oh, so it is out now. Yeah. Uh, so if you want to play Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate on your PC, you can do that. Interesting that it's not coming to Xbox yet. Mm-hmm. But we'll talk about that in a second because I have some theories, Connor. I have some theories. No. Uh, so yeah, some cool memorabilia stuff. You can look up that stuff if you want. I'm sure it's all sold out by now. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of it actually looked pretty cool. I like the alarm clock. Yeah. 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 That was that was sick. I was I almost thought about opening up my wallet for that. Ooh, I thought about it. Cracked it open. Nice. Yeah, I was like I was like maybe no. Con- Tavin, you Too got indulgent. you got things you got to do. You mm-hmm. got things you got to do with your money. Anyways, uh, yeah, Final Fantasy VII First Soldier had some updates. I'm sure if you care about First Soldier, you can play First Soldier. Good for you. Yep. Um, and then Shinobi, uh, the or uh, Ever Crisis rather, uh, which is the full compilation of final fantasy 7 uh remade in the more traditional sense of a remake Mm -hmm. (laughs) looks really cool uh it does look very cool i'm very excited about it now connor they uh they splashed a little something something at the end here what is this a young a young Mm -hmm. sephiroth maybe a new some some weird like future remake stuff maybe some advent children stuff what is this guy what's going on here i could imagine them making a sephiroth game at some point integrating into it because sephiroth is a whole character that has depth that can be explored but what does that have to do with ever crisis where it's like a more traditional rpg just just Maybe something kind of cool. own story anyways we got a closed beta coming this year we'll see at least if it's been weird if they just keep saying like they, they show us stuff and they're like oh and we're see, not now, gonna tell you this is a thing on. i understand you had to announce it because of you knew the backlash you were gonna get with seven remake mm-hmm. um so you had to be like hey hey but a more traditional the thing you're looking for is coming not to the platforms you want it to come to no. but it's coming it'll probably come on pc later on down the line i can yeah, see probably but you know how these mobile ports to pc always are, yeah. are always kind of garbage anyway so that's kind of cool um but i'm tired of hearing about it mm-hmm. just give it to me i want to play it and then something very exciting very very exciting. very yes. exciting something I, you haven't played this game you just i was gonna play it in ever crisis me too not anymore not anymore because <laughs> we got a remake don't need to do that now i got some questions for you connor mm-hmm. first of all this is all remake stuff i don't know what the first so to 
for everybody listening at home, this is Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core Reunion, which mm-hmm. is a remake right. of Final Fantasy VII or Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core. It's a game that <sighs> took place this some years convention. before the events of Final Fantasy VII. I think it was like it started seven or something. Literally like that leads up leads up to moments before Final Fantasy. VII. Yes, it does. And, and if you have played Final Fantasy VII, you know what all that is mm-hmm. and so forth. So PSP game, PSP or PSP game? PSP game, PSP game. So not many people had the ability to play this game. Yep. But the people who did, it's pretty popular. Actually. Even if you have a Vita, it's it's hard to to jump through the hoops to play mm-hmm. this. So like the accessibility on this thing is in the garbage. Um, so it's very exciting that we're getting this. Uh, you know what the original game looks like. This is all new, recreated cutscenes and yeah. gameplay and everything. Oh, everything about this is new. Yes, yeah. yes. That's why it's. That's why I was so surprised because it, it's not as high fidelity as the remakes of Final Fantasy VII. Yeah, but they're still it, kind of. It em- looks like a PlayStation that. Three game. Yeah, and it looks. I think it looks great compared to the a original. Really good PlayStation Three game. Yeah, but a PlayStation Three game. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, and compared to the original, the original. Uh, look you know definitely looks a lot better Mm -hmm. uh available this winter on all platforms very interesting all platforms for this one i'll be playing it on playstation Mm -hmm. um yeah available this winter that does not mean this year (laughs) winter ranges from december to march Mm -hmm. this is a february title Mm -hmm. if i've ever fucking heard one you know this is a february march title if i'm gonna put my money on it but either way i will not mind very very exciting i'm excited to play that i'm excited to expand my knowledge now connor is we're about to get into the announcement of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Part two. I have a question for you about Crisis Core Reunion. Mm-hmm. So we're going with the naming conventions of the R's for yeah. our remake series with Final Fantasy VII. Will Crisis Core Reunion be a traditional remake, or will it fall in line with, with the R series? You see, I feel like a lot of the stuff that's going to be changed, in, mm-hmm. that's going to involve stuff that happened in Crisis Core, mm-hmm. is going to be somewhat explained in, in a way that's made sense to people who have played the original game, the the, um, uh, yeah, the original Crisis Core. Yeah. So with them remaking it, I think it's going to be a verbatim remake. Maybe have something else extra in there to tie into something, but doesn't like shake up the foundations of what was the original game. Yeah. And it's only so it could be used in the remake rather yeah. than the original series. So in the context you're, you're of that. thinking maybe like uh this is the Crisis, this is your traditional Crisis Core remake, but maybe you can unlock a quote unquote true ending that plays into the remake series. Yeah, possibly. It does do it in. I don't know what fashion they would do that in, but that would I I like the whole idea of what they're doing with the Final Fantasy VII remake. I'm a big fan of it, but doing it with this to a game that not many people, it is controversial, but I like it. I do too. Yeah, uh, but. Despite that, how much I like that, this is a game that not many people have played. I haven't played. Yeah. So, you know, Final Fantasy VII, they had a port for PS4. That's all they needed to do. Oh, you can get do. seven yeah. everywhere. Yeah. So, it, you know, maybe you don't want to play it in that form, that old. Yeah. You gotta. Sorry. Yeah. So, okay, since people didn't play that as much, we can have access to the, the full original game was like. Because even then, I don't know everything that happened in Crisis Core. I'm... Um, you know, the broader things outside of the mainline Final Fantasy VII and Advent Children and Dirge of Cerberus, I'm clueless about. I've so. only seen the ending. Yeah. Like, because I was like, because obviously that moment plays mm-hmm. in a flashback in Final Fantasy VII. That doesn't have the emotional weight that you want with mm-hmm. that type of scene. Not anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I went and I rewatched, or I went and watched the cutscene of the ending, and I was like, you know what? It's a good ending. Yeah. <laughs> it's a really good ending. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, I'm excited for that. I, I, I really, really want to play that. Uh, and then uh, they finished off with some Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which is a sequel to Remake. Uh, showed just a quick clip of Cloud and Sephiroth walking together. For those who have played Final Fantasy VII, probably the Nibelheim flashback. Oh, of course. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, nothing else could be. We're looking open world, which makes sense mm-hmm. because in the structure of the original game, the game got a lot more open once you left um, Midgar. Midgard. Mm-hmm. Uh, Midgard? Midgar. 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 Um, so yeah, it looks open world. Probably will be open world mm-hmm. uh, with some linear segments as you get to town to town. It's like okay, now you're here, and now you're you know just in your town, and there's like a little free roam area that you can come back to or whatever. Mm-hmm. Probably can't go back in, to Midgar. No, um, like in the original game. Yeah, I think this is going to be a very traditional. Th- I think this segment is going to be very traditional up until the ending again. Like mm-hmm. we're going to get all of those emotional beats that we always get. Maybe a couple things will be different. It depends on what we're doing with Zack. Yep. Uh, yeah, full spoilers for Final Fantasy VII. And VII uh, Remake. Uh, oh, dude, there could be like a dual story going on where like 
we are playing out the usual events that we're used to, and we're playing out some other stuff going on. I don't know. Next winter, we'll find next out. Next winter does not mean next year, guys. Mm-hmm. Like we just I'm said. Gonna, I'm going to, because Final Fantasy VII Remake came out, what, that was like a February, March title? It came out earlier. I want to say, say it was a March title. Um, so I, I would imagine this is as well. They're, they're coming faster than I thought they were coming. Yeah, you thought it was going to be long. I, I, you, you definitely thought it was going to be longer. Especially because we got Final Fantasy 16 just around the corner. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, I was expecting to wait longer for this. April 10th. April mm-hmm. 10th. Okay. Still, yeah, relatively right. early. I think it was supposed to come out in February and then got delayed or mm-hmm. something like that. That sounds familiar. Um, yeah, that does. And then they also announced, hey, this is going to be a trilogy. We've locked it down. Three parts. Mm-hmm. Um, Which is what people were expecting. So it's yeah. good we got confirmation on that. No name on the third part yet. Mm-hmm. We're going to get it. I'm going to guess, Connor, this is going to be pretty traditional, pretty close to what we got uh, in the original for the most part, unless we're doing like some dual storylines with Zack or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I think for the most part, they're going to stick pretty true with the flashbacks and the cloud having his crisis or whatever. You imagine this ends around the period of time where, uh, spoilers, Mm -hmm. where Aerith dies. You imagine? That seems like a natural story beat. It does, but as you were saying before, seeing the ending change, that's yeah. what you could see. Maybe yeah. we'll see another character death. Maybe it'll just... And then this is where I think... Because through. there's a lot of game left. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Aerith's death in the original game happens about halfway through. Mm-hmm. Maybe even a little before. I think I would say a little bit more than halfway. You think so? I would say just, just a little bit, not by much. Interesting. Because there is a lot of game left after Aerith dies. So I am, But that's a good narrative beat to end on. And with where they left us off in the first part... Uh, I imagine part three is going to be drastically different than uh, the original. And I believe so they're just going to recreate their whole new ending or something. Maybe you have a final boss fight with weapon um, mm-hmm. where you fight weapon. Maybe that um, would make sense. Right. Uh, but, you know, they can really do whatever the fuck they want, especially because they're doing whatever the fuck <laughs> they want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, they are. So, yeah, I'm very curious as to what is going to happen here. I like the idea of Sephiroth being in your party. <laughs> that would be funny. That would yeah. be. That's would gonna be, be way cooler than it is in Seven, where he just one hits everything. But mm-hmm. seeing it with the scale and the spectacle that we can do today, where he's just he again is just gonna one hit everything. Mm-hmm. But it'll be cooler to watch. Yeah, you know. Just so I am excited for that. Um, yeah, I'm. I mean, I'm not a big Final Fantasy fan. I've really only played Seven, mm-hmm. uh, and Seven Remake. So yeah, I'm excited to continue my adventure in in Seven Rebirth. Uh, you probably think this is probably coming out in 2024, 2023. I would say 2023. I'm gonna, di- I'm gonna, die. I'm you gonna, be, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hope it's gonna be a December title. Maybe I think so. You think yeah. so? I think that'll be my 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 lock of the week. No, that's a March. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying it again, that's a March thing. But like, oh, we have uh, a date for 16. We don't have a date for 16 yet. Just that it's coming next year. Yes, yes. I'm gonna say. Uh, cause we still got to get 16 out. We gotta, we have to, you know, give that the proper time. Uh, I do think that means, uh, Kingdom Hearts 4 is probably closer than we think. It might be. You know, we're expecting probably some years on, on KH4, but I think we're probably, we might get it 20, end of 2024, beginning of 2025. Mm-hmm. Uh, even. Maybe. We'll see. You know, uh, Square Enix here is really putting their foot on the gas. Right. They are. Connor. Then, by the way, 2023. Sorry. It's just, is all we have yeah, for 16. 16 yeah. Yeah. Uh, which I'm going to play. I'm interested in seeing. Of course. Um, Connor, 7 Remake is not available for Xbox yet. Does not seem to be coming to Xbox mm-hmm. anytime soon. Yeah. Rebirth is going to be PlayStation exclusive. Um, why? Mm-hmm. When uh, uh, Crisis Core Reunion is coming to everything, why is 7 Remake and why is Rebirth locked to PlayStation still? You know, PC players can play Remake now, which is great for them. Yeah. Uh, why are Xbox fans being left out, do you think? You know, it, it is possible, maybe with the transition into what they're trying to do with the next Final Fantasy, that all they're doing is going to do what they did with Steam, where they release it after... They released Steam. They, I remember them releasing the Steam version after the PlayStation version, right? Of what? Back, of Final Fantasy VII Remake. They just released it on Steam. Uh, they integrate. Week. Yeah. Yeah, but then they also released oh, so the original. Oh, seven one. remake. Yeah, the first uh, it should seven have been. remake been on PC. I thought it had been. Yeah, I thought it was just integrated that was being transitioned. Oh, over. you might be right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you might be uh, right. I can see them just holding off for Xbox and yeah. just going to be doing that along with Steam or around that time, especially because there's so much more intrinsically synced together now. Has it been? It's probably been about a year since Integrate came out, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, 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 somewhere around there. Yeah, it was around that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I'm wondering if we have a year exclusive uh, on PlayStation. 
but I'm curious if the exclusivity deal on consoles reaches to either A, all parts are out, which mm-hmm. means Xbox fans aren't going to get Final Fantasy VII Remake until the third game comes out yeah. in 2028. Um, sorry. Mm-hmm. Or uh, we have to wait till Rebirth comes out for Remake to come to Xbox. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Or, you know, or a year after Rebirth, then Xbox players get Remake. Who knows? Um, that sucks, especially when you consider... You know, there's all these talks of PlayStation buying Square Enix anyway. Mm. In which case, once that happens, no, it's never going to happen. You know yeah. what I mean? Even 16 is coming to... 16 is coming to... No, 16 is PS5. PlayStation ex, PlayStation 5 exclusive. Mm. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Xbox fans, you may never get to play Final Fantasy. I'm sorry. We'll see how that plays out. Who knows? It is, it is a strange thing to do, though. Very. Yeah. Very, very interesting. That's one that, like, so they put that down in ink somewhere years ago, and it's, like, it's probably paying off very well for mm-hmm. them because these are very hyped titles. Um, And then just for shits and giggles, Connor, they're going with the R naming convention. Yeah. The R with the re- mm-hmm. Remake, rebirth, uh, reunion. They like the R's. Yeah. You know? What do we think uh, What do we think this third game is going to be called? Final Fantasy VII Revengeance? <laughs> Revengeance? Oh, my God. That'd be revenge? Maybe right. they just tone it down a little bit? Uh one of them that popped into my mind just because it's a, a mechanic revive but i don't know how that would really function into three maybe i'd be curious yeah. see maybe oh, restore you know what it should have been reunion because 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 of the name reunion yeah. having such heavy context but now that it's now that it's with the crisis core remake it's not yeah. it's not I mean, those who haven't played final fantasy 7 reunion is a big deal yes it case. is just the word alone yeah yeah and it would make sense for that to be the final final fantasy 7 probably ever be released yeah, to yeah, be, yeah name that yeah we're assuming and again we're gonna get into spoilers of final fantasy 7 here mm-hmm. sephiroth in remake knows how the events of 7 play out yeah that's clear so he's time traveled he's gotten a vision from the future he's doing something tuned with the mako energy that makes him see other uh, versions of the other planet. universes yeah. other parallel something something's going on with sephiroth he's doing something weird mm-hmm. um So I'm curious if, so so he had he tricked our party, mm-hmm. quote unquote, tricked our party in remake to kind of break the timeline. Yeah. So so now anything can happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and now we're we're in rebirth, where anything can happen, but the immediate, immediately like the immediate actions the party take still kind of has to be the same. Yeah, you yeah. know, because their their objective was the same. Leaving Midgard, they just got sidetracked by their mm-hmm. weird little parallel universe thing. Yep. Um, and then it's just kind of what does Sephiroth do from here on out? Yeah, that's the big question. Well, yeah. No one knows what his angle is. And Sephiroth hasn't in this part at this point in the plot. Sephiroth hasn't really entered the main party's plot yet. Mm-hmm. He's going to. He's very close to. So like the Nibelheim stuff. The Barrett side missions, Red 13 and, and Red Canyon. I imagine all of that stuff is going to be pretty much the same. It's mm. when Aerith goes to make her sacrifice. That's where shit gets a little... That's where shit's going to get wild. Yeah. Right? Uh, I would expect it to be. That's yeah. where I would expect it to be as well. With, like, as you said, or parallel maybe, plots make sense too. Maybe when, when Sephiroth shows up... What's the what's the vacation spot called? Where they're uh, all going to the Del beach? Cost, Del Costa? Del, Del Costa, Costa? Something like so, that. Yeah. And then they're on the ship for a little while. And they, they're they in the... the mm. The heavy, the gun town, and then Tifa and Scarlet slap each other a little bit. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. That yeah. whole weird, very weird arc happens. Costa de Sol. Del Co- Sol. De Sol. Um, maybe that'll play a little different. Who mm-hmm. knows? You know, who knows? Um, I also imagine the order in which you do things probably changes. Maybe something happens. Yeah. I don't know. Who knows? There were small changes depending on your actions in, in Remake. I imagine those are going to get more and more dramatic as we move on. Yeah. I with with the, its mystical element too, I can even see them changing up Cosmo Canyon. I won't try to put spoilers in there, but is that what it you calls? know, Red Canyon. Right, it, co- it's Red Thirteen Co- Cosmo yeah, Canyon. Cosmo Canyon. Yeah, yeah. So I can see them doing like that being also another like maybe even a mid game shift during yeah. that game. Like oh, you know, maybe give us more implications of what Sephiroth is planning, what's going on exactly, mm-hmm. the nitty gritty details. I can see them changing that up as well. So as we continue to break our timeline, mm-hmm. I just keep to to get it back to the point. I just keep landing on something to the effect of Final Fantasy uh, VII Restoration, where we fix it, you know, and and we 
because we have to beat Sephiroth. We can't let him win. No. And it looks like he's doing something else to where he thinks he can win this way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Like, the timeline still has to be restored. Mm-hmm. So I keep thinking restoration. I keep thinking uh, 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 fucking reunion would have been a great title, but it's just not. Yeah. Um. Or, or revival, something, actually revival, revive. something like that, something along yeah. those lines. Um, I hope it's not something generic, mm. like because rebirth isn't is a little generic, but it's not like super generic. I hope it's not like uh, a revelation, yeah, or oh, some God. shit like that. You know, like I really do hope that that like we we get something kind of cool. How fucking how, it would be so like them though to just call it Final Fantasy Seven Part Three. <laughs> <laughs> like like just a fuck you like, fuck you, yeah, you we don't get the name. <laughs> anyways connor that's about it for the news mm-hmm. uh so let's go ahead and get back to a segment we haven't done in a little while called uh what we've been playing connor fun time connor what have you been playing i've been playing final fantasy strangers of paradise stranger of paradise uh, origins i should say stranger of paradise uh, so as you're seeing this opening cutscene, mm-hmm. I'm just going to jump right into it. Jump right into uh, it, buddy. Because the one thing I have to talk about, first of all, is the story and the characters. Okay. Because this opens up. It's cool cinematic. I think it's really, really cool. We'll probably see it come later on. You may want to skip later ahead because this is the actually just basically cut scenes of the first 15 minutes entirely. Okay. And... it, I'll wait it does this. Yeah. It does this scene, you know, cool battle scene, uh... Nice. Hypes up the game. Does sure. its job. Yeah. The next one... Gets you hooked. It does get you hooked. The other one does something similar where they drop you into the middle of a boss fight later in the game to get you acclimated with the controls. Uh-huh. Like, okay. Makes sense. Typical right? stuff. Yeah, yeah. You fight, you learn to play the game, and then these dark clouds end up through a cutscene shrouding the camera, and it goes on to the next part. It opens up to a shot, a wide shot, of a golden field. Uh, of straw. It looks very brilliant and nice, right? Oh, cut. I got added. I got added. Skip. skip. So, you won't be able to hear it. You won't be able to hear it. Go back up. Go back up. Go back back a little bit more. Back a little bit. There we go. 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 Does it even open with like a cherry blossom effect? Okay, we're clouded away. This this is the end of that last cutscene. This is the last of that cutscene. Okay, with the the end of that boss fight that you're talking about. Things got clouded. Okay, shadows. Nice We're in it. What's happening? What's gonna happen? Oh, you skipped the cutscene. Damn it. What an idiot. Uh... There's a cutscene before this, opening up on um, the main character, Jack. Oh, he's, record- he's recording directly from his PlayStation yeah. 5, and that scene got blocked. Mm-hmm. Okay, I see. Yeah. And My Way by Frank Sinatra starts playing. As it zooms into him listening to My Way by Frank Sinatra, a uh, now official Final Fantasy song, and then you get into the deeper parts of the tutorial, where it teaches you more complex things. Like... Like more complex, like dodging. Yes, like dodging. <laughs> yes, because it really just teaches you how to attack. Basic whack controls, on exactly. Usual stuff. And the next scene is him meeting the cast members, oh, holding I've seen up this the cutscene. Yes, I've seen this cutscene. That is right after that last yeah, one. Yeah, this is this is something. The plot is so just out there. It's yeah. not. It, no, 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 I'm sorry. It's not out there. It's not written well. No, <laughs> yeah. Let's be honest. It's from a writing standpoint, it is messy. Mm-hmm. It is uh, not dedicated to trying to really care about the characters, give them lots of personality. One of the only exceptions, though, is Jack, who is just a force of nature. He, he it tells you we're gonna kill chaos. That's okay. the goal. That's the marketing. Uh huh. We're gonna kill and chaos. He is dead. He is tired of anything that does not involve him getting closer to killing chaos. He gets annoyed. He gets upset. He cuts people off. He's Damn. rude to people because they're not letting him kill chaos. Kill chaos. He got to go kill chaos. And that is what they do throughout the entire game with little bits of details, plot details done through like text that you can find throughout the game. They're very hard to miss. So you could easily see them. And it gives you more, like I said, it gives you more insight into what exactly is going on because there's something under the surface. It's not, not everything is as it appears to be. Mm. It, it, it's not going to be done in a very, like, shocking way, I know. Or, or, that sho- or at least one that shocks me in a way that you know, makes the story all make sense and really start impacting me. It's probably just going to confuse me further whenever it does happen. <laughs> but besides that, they literally just blind through everything. Okay. They, they meet a new party member, they pick them up with basically little resistance whatsoever, move on. Kill chaos. Beat a boss fight. Instant them just like walking away. They want to go kill chaos. We're not. We're not. We're not sticking around to talk about our feelings here. Connor. No. 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 Ends up making not good characters. 
admittedly, except yeah. for Jack, because he's what he is. Uh, but really, that sets the tone of the entire game. It hasn't really oh, yeah? changed. The consistency of the writing has not changed. It is still all over the place, one bit to the next, not answering any questions, maybe even asking a couple more, and then just whoop, going right by. But don't think about it. And I'm hours in. I'm not like, I just started the game a couple days ago. I am hours in. How deep do you, how, how many hours in do you think? Now, it's hard to judge because, yeah. you know, Japanese games, when you pause, you, unless even when you pause the game, the internal clock still goes on. You got to go to your PlayStation Home menu, Connor. I do, yeah. So it's at 20 hours in game, but I know I haven't played 20 hours because I left it on one day, especially long when oh, I was yeah, probably busy. Probably to what, 15, 17, we, somewhere on there? Yeah, yeah, that's probably more an accurate statement. Uh, but plot aside, because I'm not going to bother going more into detail than what I just did because it's convoluted. The combat system, which is the real meat of the game, is fantastic. It is a really solid combat system. Yeah, you, you, you might want to go ahead. Oh uh, yeah, let me find some for you. Yeah. But go ahead, go ahead, I, give, give us the breakdown. Now I had known about the kind of how it was originally going to be, where you have access to a number of classes that are all relegated to a certain weapon that you find throughout the game. The battle axe, the great sword, the daggers, the the oh, mason hold on. shield. He's, he's about to pull up the, the skill tree here. No, no, this is oh, that, this none is of that. Okay, later. okay. Yeah, well then keep later. going, keep going. Yeah, it, well, um oh I guess he could have pulled up the skill tree. I didn't see it happening yet but anyway uh all these different weapons that are associated with different classes starting classes swordsman marauder mage uh monk where uh -huh. you can punch people nice that's how it, the, the classes start but as you go through the tree system you uh, at the very end of it unlock job trees yes, they're called job jobs trees. these different classes yes jobs as they've always been in final fantasy but when you get to the bottom i don't know if you'll scroll to it probably not yeah probably not uh more classes will unlock advanced classes subclasses and okay. when you go into those whole other skill tree that oh, yeah? once again go into other jobs one more and then that's the final job yeah. that you can get to uh but i like, to how, the, I like how this sounds it's very good it's cool thing, satisfying like in progression ways and it really is and in the diversity of gameplay because mm -hmm. you have to play the other classes to level them up and as you get to advanced classes like for example the berserker it says that you need to get to the berserker class on the uh swordsman job tree but also the marauder job tree to get down to that to actually unlock that class and then go forth and do the same thing and once you reach the bottom of that skill tree it's like okay you have to unlock this other one to do this advanced expert now, class let me, as they let call me it. pause you right here this is not an open world game right? no no it's mission 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 mission. okay so you kind of have to plan where you're gonna go in the skill tree before you even like really like start plant placing your upgrades because i've unless there's is there easy like respec options going on see that's the cool thing because the issue that easily could have arisen was that, oh, you have so many classes, and to unlock more of them, you have to play a bunch of different classes, sometimes even three for the uh -huh. expert classes, usually just two for the advanced ones, eh, only two for all the advanced ones, but um, with the exception of one. Uh, getting back on track, where are my thoughts, where are my thoughts, collect them. The way the skill tree works is that it, as you go down, the numbers that are required to unlock those skill points get higher, to the point where the final one is it like can be at eight. Eight skill points. Typical point yeah, shit. Which you get one level for each time you level up the job, which happens relatively quick. This this skill costs one, the next one costs yes. two, the next one costs three. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so along those lines. Now, to speed up progression, because there is a lot of jobs, which, you know, like I said, fists, magic, great swords, daggers, sword and shield, everyone feels different and unique to play and is extremely fun. But uh, you're only delegated to, like I said, that one weapon associated with that one class. Now, and you unlock more in advanced classes. So when you're going down to the skill tree, uh, like I said, it can be eight at the very end, right? But if you go to the, uh, the next notch down that costs one point, it'll decrease the amount of points that are needed to get to that final area. Now, that's very important because what you can... So let's say that I unlock a couple skill trees and now I need five points. Uh, the, 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 the amount that it would cost to unlock that advanced class is now five points. Well... If I get five points when I'm leveling up, I could use those five points to go right directly to unlock the advanced class and unlocking all the abilities that are in its wake and skill trees in its wake. So if you hoard your points rather than going for each and every single individual one, you can just bloop, go and get done with a whole skill tree very quickly. It becomes more difficult. I'm sorry. So does that mean does that mean specific skill tree costs or specific skill point costs five yeah uh there there are ones required before it but you haven't unlocked those because you've been hoarding your points or you've been focusing on other trees does that 
if it's five and then the ones before it are four, three, two, one. Yeah. Do you need the points for four, three, two, one? No. You get, oh, you just jump five point. and it just comes you right down. If the class that you're trying, if the thing you're trying to unlock, and this doesn't just apply to the classes, it's every single module on the skill tree. Uh-huh. If it costs three and there's one before it that says two, if you have three points, it'll unlock the one that costs two and the one that costs three with just three points. Because and that's really important because, like I said, the skill trees are extensive. Yeah. They're not exactly like little like five points and then you're done. Some webbing. Yes, it's webbing, but it's efficient webbing to where you're getting as much of the game as possible, as quickly as possible, but still at a rate of progression that doesn't get it all to you too quickly. Okay. Like I'm still pretty far into unlocking jobs, which is why I think I'm is, a little bit far off. Is there is there a respec option? Uh, no. There's not really a need for respecking. Not not one that you've seen. Oh, okay. no, there's, there's no not need really a need for. It. Okay, because you unlock you unlock you can unlock every single skill tree skill point on the skill trees. Because, so I'm sorry. So mm-hmm. like, how do you get these points? You get it by jo- by f- by playing in that in that in job. Class. Yes, but you can also put on equipment that has affinity with other classes. So for example, I can be playing as I said before, berserker. Uh, but I'm like I but the Ronin, one of the starter classes. I don't really I don't want to play that class to unlock you know, maybe another job on that tree. Uh-huh. But I can have, a, a, if I have equipment that has, it'll say on the side, like affinity with the Ronin class, 14%, 15%, even upwards of 39%, a little bit of, a little bit of progression, depending on how high that affinity score is, uh, will level up that other class slowly, but it's still at a rate to where, you know, maybe if you just constantly did that for equipment, uh, you do, because you, this actually I need to explain first. Almost forgot. You can have access to two jobs at the same time that's okay. switchable with triangle during combat. Okay. In fact, even when you're doing certain skills, because each class and weapons have certain skills associated with them, you can change in the middle of that for fast job change. I'm seeing a lot of I'm seeing a lot of like there's a lot of empty space here in this UI right here. <laughs> you could just re unlocking more classes eventually. Oh, and... there's lots of there's tons of jobs. No, and that's, I mean that's no, I mean like set. like like off, like off the hot key re unlock it. Like we start with two, and then as we get twenty no. hours deep, we start getting three, four, five. So right up there, that's the level of affinity that you have on your equipment. So for example, swordsman right there, fifty five percent. Okay, yeah, gotcha, that's what yeah. those are. Yeah, yeah. That means it's going to be easier, especially since you're playing it. Uh, to upgrade the swordsman job tree. Got gotcha. the other ones. This duelist. is the equip. The the equipment he has equipped are building towards these classes. Yes, and then these are the percentages of how the classes. Yes, and then it'll it'll de- that determines how quickly you're going to be able to unlock skill trees in those other classes. Uh, very it, complex system. It took a little bit for me to like work out the menu because it's not explained super well. Okay. But it's enough. They give they leave you enough to where even though I was frustrated at first finding how everything worked, it clicked. I was like, okay. I can just cycle through this stuff really quickly. Well, even how I'm reading it right now, just with experience of just gaming and stuff, like I, uh, yeah, okay, this yeah. looks like it's f- you can figure this out. Yeah, it's you can not figure like it out. it's not it's not like The Witcher Two where that that menu is a fucking mess. Like, no, okay, no. clearly we're on the you know we're on the equipment sub sub screen of weapons. Like, okay, and then here's the different my, weapon types. A lot of my real issues came with armor uh-huh. because you can make presets for it. Now, uh-huh. each of your classes when you switch to them to triangle can have different equipment on them. So, it, it, you're, you're gonna have you can easily have two pairs of different equipments of uh you know armor on and whatnot. Spending a lot of time in menus, ones. then are you? Yeah, yeah, but you can also level up uh, some of these things as well. So you're not constantly doing that because you get loot at a very high rate, which you can then just break down at the smithy to use to upgrade yeah, you know yeah, yeah. other pre-existing weapons. Okay. Which I haven't spent a lot of time in, like I said, because I kind of just go for whatever the highest level equipment is onto my character and put Jack with the best stuff. Uh, and ones that have affinity relating to what my job is at that time to you know maximize the way that I want to play. And with everyone else, I kind of just cycle through pretty much the same way. It, it, it's so I do spend a lot of times in menus, which is one of the criticisms of it. Is it only Jack who has this level of detail? Everyone else is like set in stone. Oh or? yeah, they have one access to one class at the beginning. As the story progresses, they have access to other ones, but just one other one in the advanced class and then one other one in the expert class which you can switch to at a in the battle settings but it's all centered around their, their one primary class, class. yeah they, so you only have to have one armor set for them it's only okay. jack that has different ones yeah. to allow for you to have different affinity on different armor it sounds like jobs. how mass effect andromeda should have done it yeah is what it sounds like mm-hmm. to me because you remember you could you could use abilities from whatever class and yeah. so forth but it just kind of meant that like you just found the two, three abilities that worked well together and, you mm-hmm. know, used them all and became an overpowered met. Like, this sounds like a level of progression that that if if the next Mass Effect wants to go that route, they should take notes. Mm. It's, it's a good combat system. It's a good skill tree system. 
Uh, I can sit here explaining. The Talk to me about combat here. So, uh, like, uh, I'm seeing a lot. I saw a lot of what kind of what looked like a, a version of what we saw in Final Fantasy VII Remake and, uh -huh. and uh, 15 and so forth. Stagger bars. Is this, like, the typical stuff going on? Or? Yeah, yeah. So, down there, you see that's your MP. Now, whole... The we're, whole talking, we're talking these purple yeah, meters purple right here. Lines. And above that is health, obviously. Health, of course. Uh, each weapon, and you unlock the... So, the cool thing is, going back to the skill tree real quick. Uh -huh. If, for example, one of them, let's say... Uh, Let's say the swordsman class. It'll when you go through the job tree in the swordsman class, it'll say, "Hey, this sword ability is unlocked," and you, you know, activate it with RT, RT, uh, R, R two when you're going through main combat. So you use your skills that you gain uh, in uh, by just pressing R two, and you can have them set to certain combo pieces. So for example, it'll be like R one, R one, R one, and then your R two ability, which will be different than your R one, R one, R two ability, which could be something different. So you do so abilities are set to combos, not to like a specific hotkey. No, no, because you just you you mix it in with regular attacking. Okay. To just you know maximize your damage output. Gotcha. And, and like I said before, when you use those R two skills, you if you press triangle right away, it'll switch to the other job class with very little you know time in between. Is, so you is can this a way in which we can kind of get out of the uh, the quasi ATB system of seven remakes? So instead of digging through menus to get to your abilities, you're just putting in these these types of combo type things yeah 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 you know granted you don't have access to much you don't have access to all of them at any time because you have to select them when you're you know customizing your character which yeah. you could do at a moment's notice whenever you want even to, outside of save points now the the mp bars are segmented do these build up like atb bars did in that game or is it like more just on a time basis or like energy gained by defeating enemies how's that work that's actually really cool because the whole power of jack is he's able to crystallize enemies and break them now when he does that, you you, he, you have to get their stagger bar down, which is uh, the bar below enemy's health. I saw you that. also have your own and can get staggered yeah. additionally. Um, but when you stagger the enemies, you press circle and you do a soul burst where you do some cool animation and crack them into crystal. Okay. When you do that, your MP bar grows. Because when you start out a mission, it's only at two. And then it, a little bit of it grows each time you do that to where I you see. can get up to that level. I see, yeah. Uh, Parrying also does the same exact thing, where if you parry at a right time, it'll fill up that bar and allow you to do a counterattack uh, very quickly. So that's how you upgrade that bar. And that's every single one of those bars usually consumes one R2 skill. Boy, this game does not look pretty. <laughs> it does. It does. It doesn't. Level design's not too uh, fantastic this is, either. This is some early PlayStation 3 stuff. It is combat 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 it okay. is what defines the game when you're in like any kind of open world setting uh, not open world setting when you're in any non-pre-rendered cutscenes, the game looks atrocious <laughs> voice lines aren't matched up properly they are in the cinematics which is a bulk bulk of what you see in the game okay so it's almost never really an issue besides the first couple hours of the game but the end game stuff what is it like synced up to like japanese <laughs> lips or i wouldn't I, that or just bad or they just kind of just didn't care <laughs> I, I, ladders. beyond me it is beyond <laughs> me ladders see how do you lose ladders that's how you use ladders yeah that's it uh but yeah bring up a whole menu for that no 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 the cool thing is though uh additionally to that mp bar conversation when you die bars go away oh okay i like that yeah and any equipment that you had gained throughout that mission when you die stays any progression stays everything stays huh. so it's kind of almost kind of like a roguelike in that situation do you have to the, start the mission over when you die at the last save point that you were at whatever that might have been and but you, you kept, you kept any equipment yes progression so any like that. items you use are also gone uh well there's not really item use you have health okay. potions five of them mm -hmm. that go that you can regenerate through going to cubes and you can sometimes find them around the map but not really that often they were kind of like uh kind of like how like a Sekiro health yeah thing they're like work. souls okay. games yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah more similar to that but there's not really item use the closest thing is command abilities which you can activate using mpb mp but they're not items and they don't you know they were your apt atb replenishes however much bars you've unlocked when you just go to a cube a lot of systems yeah but that's why it was kind of compilated kind of con Convoluted. Complicated. complicated convoluted and complicated to navigate the systems in the first place but it clicks and now i'm just like i spend a lot of time in the menu but it's really just because i'm really particular with everything being up to date a lot of the time i sure. actually go through and i'm like bing, 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 bing. i go through it quickly on my hands so i'm able to do it i love how much of this review is just you making noises <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah but he uh um uh the combat you run around you hit things like i said and you, you integrate your combo pieces with it and it's very, very fun and very diverse. The diversity is really what sells it because you're constantly using different weapons because it, you know, 
it's kind of what it recommends you do to unlock as many classes as possible. Uh, combat, it, it feels really good and looks complicated, as you probably can tell from all yeah. these systems it's explaining. Oh, and we each got, one, we've got stick inputs, we've got button inputs. Yeah, it, they're very minimal, and they're all oh, they're okay. the same across. And, and not, cool. sometimes they're not even as extensive. It depends yeah. on the weapon you're using. Like the axe doesn't really have much besides just charging your attacks, your light attacks. Gotcha. Um, but uh, every single weapon also has does play differently. They do. They don't have the same exact movement options as they do always. So leads to fun this, fun this game combat. looks fun to play it's it is i i am itching always to go back to it just because i have so much fun with the gameplay it that's is that's dope some of the best gunplay gunplay i've had this year really really fantastic it's just that the package that that gameplay is in is not not phenomenal no but fun it but is fun so fun. you're not like you're not there just like i'm bored you're there having a fun time it's a fun it's the opposite gameplay. of guardians of the galaxy <laughs> yeah, yes actually yes it, it, literally the exact opposite uh, which I would rather be here than there. And like, this, yeah, every, yeah, I would too. Yeah. Admittedly. Yeah. yeah this yeah, is yeah. definitely a better game than, than Gardens of the Galaxy with that similarity in mind. Yeah. Man, the armor looks ridiculous at some points. It's oh, God. Oh, it's, that. it's funny. It is so funny. Yeah. Just it's, from a design perspective, this does not look good no. to like to look at. Like just none of it looks good to look they at. They focused this on a, combat. That's a, no, this is all an eyesore. All of this is an eyesore. Jesus Christ. Yeah, some of the Why is he in cool? jeans and a fucking Henley and then our main dude's in combat armor? That's the beginning armor, but then it gets ridiculous when you unlock it. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, you don't... The stuff you get in the game is not generic looking by any means. Oh Say that. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, this combat looks fun as fuck. Yeah, yeah, it's extremely fun. I have... And it's... Yeah. It's okay. a great game. I'm enjoying a lot of it. It can get difficult, especially now that I put it on hard. Well, I wish I had... I wish I had done this a month ago when our when our down period had started. Yeah. I wish I had jumped in, but now I can't mm-hmm. because uh, I'm playing all these other games right now that I want to continue playing until uh, there's... Uh, the Fire Emblem game is coming out soon, mm-hmm. and I want to I wanna play that, or I want to try that. I've downloaded the demo. Uh, but then it's stray. So now I'm I'm kind of upset that I don't have time right now to come visit this. Yeah. Uh, Which is a shame because it is a good game. If you ever have any time to play a game, yeah, it's one I would recommend. Yeah, if we find if we find some time, <clears throat> if we find some time again. Yeah. Okay. Overall, you're enjoying it. You're going to continue your your. I will beat it. Your, undoubtedly, you're going to play. You're going to beat it. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I'll, I maybe even beat it next week. Who knows? Who knows? All right. Well, Connor, thank you so much for that. Yeah. All right. Uh, jumping into. What I've been playing real quick, I'm probably going to break that out oh, and yeah? make it like the channel's like little thing, just as a little extra video to throw up on the week. Uh, it's going to get no views because that game is well outside <laughs> of its relevant point. Uh, I've been playing Hades. Mm-hmm. Once again. Uh, well, let me back up. I've been... Ah, uh, there's noise coming mm-hmm. out of my fucking thing. Anyways. Um, I've mostly been playing Hades. I've been playing a couple of things. I'm in a period right now where I can't commit to one thing. Hmm. I'm installing and deleting games constantly. I installed Death Stranding, Director's Cut, started that up. Those cutscenes are atrocious, mm-hmm. and the first two hours of the game are cutscene. Yeah. Um. So I, yeah. I was like, this isn't doing it for me. Delete. I installed hmm. No Man's Sky because we saw the um, Starfield gameplay, very No Man's Sky inspired. So I was like, I'm in the mood for, for that type of space adventure. But then I didn't even load it up. Because I remembered how heavy the tutorial was. Mm. And I like I was like looking up guides of like fastest way to get going in No Man's Sky. They were all an hour long and required a bunch of prep work. I was like, nah, not doing it. Damn. Lots of lots of like uh currencies and minerals and just a lot of learning. Mm-hmm. I don't have time for that. I don't have time for learning right mm-hmm. now. I'm looking for something I can play right now, right. right now. Um, I think I even texted you. I was like, hey man. Valkyria Chronicles. Can I just like jump in and just like hit some raw gameplay? And you were like, no, not really. Like yeah. it's kind of its own thing. I was like, fuck. Managing that, systems. Because because yeah. what I'm itching for right now, Connor, honestly, is some fucking Fire Emblem. Yeah. Because there's a lot of battles in Fire Emblem that you can just kind of knock out a bunch of side battles one day. I loaded up Triangle Strategy for a few hours, and yeah, that game is still super narrative heavy, and people are talking constantly, and I'm not in the mood for people to talk. I'm not. I lost two hours. I played for two hours and lost all that progression because I didn't do it enough investigating because I wanted to get to uh-huh. a fucking battle. Well, damn, Tavin. Stranger of Paradise would have been perfect. Would have been fucking perfect. It would have been a- right on for what you would have wanted. Anyways, uh, I've also, for uh, our video game book club that we're starting this month, I've been playing The Last of Us. But you know, we're not talking about that right now. No. Um, so, 
I've installed Hades. I've been playing Hades a little bit. I talked about it, I think, a few weeks ago, when the last time we had a what we've been playing segment. Mm. Um, and then oh, I've wow. got the, the latest, my latest best run going on right here, right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hades is a great game. Played it on PlayStation. Played it on Switch originally. Now I'm, pl- I'm working my way through on PlayStation. Eventually, plan on getting that, that sweet, sweet platinum trophy for that. Um, Resident Evil 2, PS5 version, shortly behind this. But Hades is a slow burn. Mm-hmm. That's a that's a that's a you know an everlasting gobstop of a game. You just jump in, you play, you know the mechanics, you you're going right in. Yeah, no problem. Easy, easy stuff, right? So like, I might put it down this week. I might keep playing because I'm addicted to it right now. Who knows? I don't need to spend much time talking about Hades because we spent all of uh 2020 mm-hmm. yeah. talking about Hades. Uh, so I don't need to talk anymore about Hades. Uh, but it's great. I'm loving revisiting this game. I'm having a lot of, I'm having a blast. I'm getting my trophies. I'm making my progress, collecting my dark orbs, you know, all that, all that fun stuff. Getting the keys. I've got oh, my keys. Yeah. I've unlocked Important. all the weapons, which has allowed me to unlock different weapon types for the weapons. I'm playing around with different weapon types that I didn't play around with the first time around. Did you know one of the archetypes for the bow and arrow is you just load up your, uh, your casts. Remember the casts or the little red diamond things that yeah. you throw out to do extra damage and so forth. You can load up the bow with all of your casts and shoot all three in one shot. I never played the bow that much, so I didn't know that. I played the bow a bunch, and I didn't know <laughs> that. That shit overpowered as fuck. That's what this run is built around right here. Oh. So then I just fucking I loaded it up, and every single shot was like 200 plus damage. Yeah. Like I was fucking wrecking asshole with that. That's how the bow's good. Yeah, it, it, the bow's good anyways, Well, Connor. The bow's real good. Well, remains to be seen by me. Anyways, I believe in this run I got all the way to Hades, got past his first phase, and then died in the second phase. As you do. Yep. Yep. Uh-huh. Uh, anyways, uh, Hades is great. What else have I, what else was I, I loaded up a bunch of stuff. Last of Us Part 2 was still sitting on my console. Uh, XCOM 2 I installed, got to the menu and went, nope, never mind. <laughs> Not um, the way you were talking about what you were looking for. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I can't commit to anything right now. I've put the most time into Hades. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that's what I've been playing. It's been a solid time. It's been a good time. It's been Hades. This is an amazing game. I, it's like we talked about it for a lot. Definitely it's- one of the best games ever made. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know, put roguelike as a genre on the on the on the map in a big way. Of course, yeah. it had been it had been around for many years, but. And this was the first like one to break through mainstream wise and actually do some damage. And then uh, because of it, we saw successes uh, like Returnal last mm-hmm. year, which was my game of the year and one of my favorite video games of all time. Um, but yeah, Hades was good when it came out. Still great. Mm-hmm. Everybody should play it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be it for our uh, Two Penny Games cast episode 99. Remember, you can catch us every Monday, 8 p- 8 a.m. Central Time youtube.com slash two penny games cast or mainstream podcast services of your choice uh if you catch us on the spotify's on the google podcast on the apple podcast the soundcloud please rate and share with a friend we really do appreciate it if you're on youtube go hop over to youtube.com slash two penny games cast the full channel and see uh our reaction to the xbox and bethesda showcase our sly cooper and the thievius raccoonist review and uh any other breakout videos or reviews that that are going up on the channel now um, if you want to see some gamers have some gaming moments live, twitch.tv slash two penny games. Uh, remember Tuesday, 2 p.m. Central Time, we're going live with hype. Probably finishing off some Resident Evil 3. Maybe who knows? Who knows what? Who knows what we're doing after that? You know, we're, it's World a Joyster. Short, it's a short game, that Resident Evil mm-hmm. 3. We're not we're not gonna spend the whole time on it. Anyways. Uh but mm-hmm. until next time, have a great time. Uh and Connor. Say goodbye to the people. See you in the 100th episode.